Hey, hey it's CDA and welcome back to Dyson Sphere program. Today we are going to do the last final piece of this series. We are going to make a planet that is producing an insane amount of science and we are going to see how far we can get it on one planet. The original target was one full belt on a planet. I think we can do better than that so let's see how crazy we can get. Step one, we started with a typical hub and we added in a lot of power. So I actually stole this dome from our previous build in the last episode. It's a pretty decent starting dome if you want to make some overpowered builds. So I'll actually include a blueprint specifically for this in the description as well. Um, but this gives us about 8 gigawatts of energy. So that should be enough to make some science. At least I would hope so. Step two. We make this entire planet into a giant billiard ball. As you can see, all kinds of the foundations all across the planet. I even got achievement for that because apparently I hadn't ever done that. And to be honest, I can both recommend it and not recommend it. It takes a while. It's a lot of patience. However, when you put in that last little piece of foundation, it's extremely satisfying. Um, so yeah, if that's your thing, definitely go for it. It's fun to do at least once and hey, you get an achievement for it. So anyway, now we just need to fill this up and that will probably take even longer, but yeah, we have a goal in mind. So let's get to it. So this should get us some science, but, um, yeah, it's going to take a while to actually build all of this considering my FPS just plummeted when I put down all these blueprints. So in case you're wondering... Is it my PC that's completely um, ruining my gameplay or is it the game that's ruining the gameplay? Well, it's probably the latter because to be honest, at some point you do get to a point where your PC just basically goes like, uh, no, just no. And to be honest, I have a pretty high-end machine at the moment, but um, yeah, even my machine will have a pretty big struggle when you're placing down 72,000 buildings at the same time. It will actually improve once you start building you, the buildings. Uh, honestly, when you, the, for some reason, the blueprints really seem to have a very high tax on the computing power of your PC and the... Um, it's probably the graphics or the, the CPU. I'm not entirely sure what's causing the issue. I'm not an expert on that field. But it's noticeable that uh, the more you build, the better the FPS again becomes. So apparently just showing these uh, ghost buildings is quite taxing on the system. Anyway, be right back a few hours while building this. Now look at all those nice little white signs coming in. As you can see, all these facilities, or at least a lot of them, are actually working quite hard in order to produce some of that white science. Um, but they're not working at optimal speed just yet. And that has everything to do with the fact that we actually need more base materials. And to be honest, even if you look at our awesome facility over here, yes, I did actually manage to build all of it. And now my FPS is back to normal. Um, as you can see, a lot of them are lit up. So we are producing quite a lot of science already. But as you can see, for example, here with this green facility, it's not completely functioning just yet. But that also has to do with the fact that it kind of has to start up. Uh, but I did double check uh, all the materials, etc., And I did find out that we are lacking some materials. So for example, I don't actually think we are proliferating everything just yet, although it seems to have caught up by now. So that's at least one problem fixed. Um, but what we also might see if we turn back on the UI, um, I'm just going to click some random ones. You can see we are relatively low on nanotubes, for example. So those are things that we need to take into consideration. Although we don't seem to be doing all that bad in the ones that I just randomly click now. But for example, this one is completely empty on nanotubes. So what we will actually need to do is we are going to have to go off planet. Make sure we get access to all that spinny form um, and the other rare materials to make all those materials on the build that we made in the previous episode. So if you didn't catch that one, make sure you go back because we basically made an entire planet to make all the rare materials that we need. I mean, we are importing most of the stuff raw. Um, but the, things like this, these are all materials that you can make with rare recipes. We are making those the easy way. So uh, other than that, we of course also need some hydrogen, some coal, some iron, etc. But to be honest, all of that should not be a problem. If you've built even just a few planets with basic mining setups, you should have plenty of that. Um, 
So a, a couple of other things. I'm actually going to include, I think, a little bit more um, science facilities on this planet. And of course, I'll include it in the blueprint. Now, the reason that I left all of this open spaces uh, hidden here is that the idea is that you can kind of utilize these planets as you want. So if you are, I don't know, let's say you're lacking foundation production, which is probably going to be a thing if you're trying to pave entire planets like I just did. Um, you can just add in a few of those builds in here. Um, there's plenty of room actually here. There's also some room on the bottom. So this is one hub that will actually allow you to build all of this. So that's of course key. There's plenty of power in here as well. So that should be enough to power the entire planet. And then of course I use the other dome for the science facility. But that leaves you actually with a lot of room. Intentionally I did not fill up that room. Because as you saw um, the FPS nearly broke my PC. Um, initially while building this and that actually makes it really slow to build so in order to make this at least a little bit user friendly I decided to not make this blueprint even larger than it already was I think something like 80,000 buildings at the same time I think it's actually a little bit more than that it's probably plenty um, for this build this build will actually give you about one and a half belt full of white science so that's that's quite a lot to be honest um, you also need to make sure you have enough critical photons coming in. So that's another thing that you do need to take into account when you make this. Um, photons are not currently being produced on this planet. Um, I don't want to assume that you're building this in the same system where you actually have a sphere. But if you do, you can just add in some of those receivers here. That will take care of itself. Um, but yeah. Speaking of which, we also need to go back to our planet with our Dyson Sphere to see how that is doing. And we are back in the Piffwithel system and it took a while and probably it has been done for hours at this point. But our Dyson Sphere that we've been trying to complete over the last couple of episodes is actually done now. The coloring is mine. Um, the, the coloring was actually implemented after we started construction of this sphere. Um, but yeah, like I said, the um, and I think this by now is probably something like five or six episodes ago. The design is not mine. I will actually link it in the description because to be honest, I don't think I've done that. And that is quite overdue, uh, but it is made by Piff Wiffle, who was kind enough to supply me with this blueprint. So if you want to have an awesome little Dyson Sphere like this in your systems as well, you can. Now, what we're actually going to have to do is if we look at this sphere, it's actually a quite a powerful sphere. It's uh, almost 50 gigawatts worth of energy. Now you can definitely go more dense and have a uh, higher amount of energy from a single sphere but right now we are only drawing about 22 gigawatts from that sphere and of course that means we're only utilizing about half the amount of um, photons we can get from it so we are definitely going to have to improve on that and that is exactly what we're going to do. So what we're actually going to do is we are going to take out most of the stuff we build on this planet. Because right now half of it is useless. And we are going to put this to work. Okay, so remember this build where we had this awesome science facility in the middle. With some receiving solar, solar receivers I should say. Uh, receiving solar receivers. Yes, I said that. Um, all around and then some photon production in the middle so this is actually producing uh well taking in the critical photons and um, exporting the antimatter in the middle might as well do that um and yeah there's also in the, um, the possibility of actually producing more white science here like we just saw on the previous planet uh, it's really easy to fill that up right now as you can see our bottleneck apparently is purple science um but we also need more photons so basically what we're doing here is we're getting in some antimatter we are producing antimatter on this planet as well and we're not just doing that on this side of the planet we're actually doing that on the other pole as well um there is a uh sorry there is a hub over here again with a lot of power in it so that should be enough to make sure everything keeps working and as you can see there's currently uh solar receivers in the dark over here and of course it depends on the rotation the tilt etc of your planet whether or not one pole or the other one will actually be used that might actually change throughout the virtual year as well and therefore um, I actually decided well why not just use both poles so you can always make sure you have some part of your facility in the light and to be honest I actually kind of like this facility this way because this actually leaves you the entire planet to mine or take advantage of whatever so 
that way you don't have your your critical photon farm so to say get in the way of whatever you might want to mine on this planet now of course i actually took out everything else on this planet in order to make a blueprint um i just realized i probably didn't have to do that but anyway uh what you can actually do with yourself as well is if you have planets like this so on this planet for example in this playthrough i had i think about 5,000 solar panels things like that i actually took out all of them because that will actually save you in terms of memory uh, later in the game. I mean, this little bunch of artificial suns is actually producing, I think, three times as much power as all my solar panels combined were doing. So, um, completely up to you, but it is something you could do. Revisit your old planets and optimize them in such a way that you have the minimum amount of lag as a result of that. Um, so, yeah, this will take care of all your... Um, Critical photon farming, assuming of course you have Dyson spheres, but we already had pretty decent builds in order to make sure you have enough rockets and you have enough solar panels in order to make all your Dyson spheres. So feel free to make some more of those and then you pretty much can make sure you get an infinite amount of um, critical photons and as a result antimatter. Now, one last thing that we need to do in order to really get our white science facility up and running is actually tap into all of those rare sciences, uh, rare resources, I should say. That is not interesting to watch at all. It's simply visiting the planets that have the rare stuff on them and make sure we mine them or we visit the um, orbital collectors and stuff like that. So I'll do that off screen and then let's see if we can get some achievements going for the white science. So do you know, remember this one, guys? The uh, little landing pot we started out with? Remember that I, once upon a time, decided that we would be going for the achievement to complete the game without actually removing your landing pot? Well, we are back on our home planet, or at least the planet we started it on. We are completely done with our goal of producing one tire... Uh, tier 3 belt of blue, uh, white science, a uh, blue science, no, it's a blue belt, it's white science. Anyway, uh, you can do the math, 108,000 universe matrices per hour is the same as one full belt. We're actually producing more already, but yeah, that is uh, what we were going for, so mission completed. It's actually kind of fun to uh, look around our little planet. You might remember our mall. I, I actually just left this planet intact, I always like just... Looking around what we've done before, this is pretty much the first 10, 20 episodes or something like that. But yeah, there we go. So, we actually are now Icarus PhD. I, apparently I didn't have that achievement either. Um, but yes, we indeed completed the game without dismantling the landing capsule. And we got the achievement for producing one full belt of white signs. So guys, I guess that is mission completed for this series. I don't really have any other thing that I want to do in this series in particular. I'm really excited about the combat update that would, is going to hopefully come uh, either during or just after the summer. Um, there have been some delays. If there is anything in particular that you would really want me to cover on Dyson Sphere in between, let me know. Uh, like I said, I think in the last episode as well, I will probably make a few guides on some stuff in the game because that really helps people prepare for the combat update so it'll be really relevant back then hopefully at least if they are not changing too much stuff uh, and in between there's plenty of stuff we can do on the channel in terms of other games there's actually quite a few things that have been coming out that i'm really interested in and actually that will be coming out over the next few months as well but of course as soon as dyson sphere the combat update is out or any other updates for that matter uh, I will be back and make sure we uh, are going to talk about that. For now, if you're still here by the end of this episode, you are a true legend. Uh, I really appreciate you guys all supporting me throughout this entire series. It's uh, been amazing to get all your feedback and I really enjoyed that. So, uh, without further ado, I think it is um, the end of this episode for now and the end of this series for now. But once again, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one.